Hi, I'm Seth, the Resource Services Librarian here at the Ames Public Library. And I'm Bree, I'm the Youth Services Manager here at the library as well. Uh, we're here to give you some recommendations for our second annual 12 to Try program. We are kicking it off in September with one of my favorites, because it's the easiest one I feel to be able to do. It's read any genre fiction. That could be mystery, science fiction, um, romance, all kinds of different things. Um, you can come in and get some recommendations from us, from our display. We're here to talk about a few today. Seth, why don't you start and tell us about some of your books? Sure. I brought some mysteries. I know you brought some romance titles today. Let's have some fun and do some recommendations. First, I bought, brought the first couple books in the Cemeteries of Amalo series by Catherine Addison. Uh, Farah Selahar is tired of being a political pawn and has taken up a position where he thinks that he can live a life of quiet service. And he's appointed a witness for the dead, hence the title of the first book in the series, which is sort of a half clergyman, half lawyer who advocates for uh, deceased people in court by finding out how they died and bringing their killers to justice. He serves in a diverse blue collar city which has its share of darkness. There's that family who's looking for the grave of the sister that they think might have been poisoned. There's the finely dressed woman floating in the canal with no identification. She's dead too, by the way, in case you didn't pick that up. There's also this tragic factory explosion that disproportionately affects the city's minority residents. And worse still, not only has he not escaped politics, Thara hears rumors from the hinterlands that something dead and hungry has clawed its way out of an unkempt grave. Okay, you caught me. It is a fantasy book. It is also a mystery book. Mostly, really, it's the story of a troubled detective with a troubled past who really wants to do the right thing and who possesses a gift for investigation that will lead him to the truth and a compassion for the people of his city that will lead that truth uh, to come to light. So mystery fans, if you like a troubled, compassionate detective, like Maisie Dobbs maybe, or fantasy fans, if you like intricate world building and political machinations, try this one, uh, Witness for the Dead by Katherine Addison. I think that's one thing I really like about genre fiction is because it blends so many genres. Like it's mystery, but it's science fiction and all that kind of stuff. And I don't know if there is like just one genre in any kind of book. Seems like they like all blend one. together. Yeah. yeah. Okay, um, I am gonna talk about romance near and dear to my heart. I uh, love a good romance book. I love that they are predictable. I love that um, they are, you know, they're always gonna end with a happy ending. Um, so when I just need something to um, pick up and read that's just gonna make me feel good, um, romance is, is where to go. Um, and there's a whole gamut of different things, but I love um, one of the authors that I've found lately is Helen Hong. Um, I love her characters um, because they're neurodivergent, um, which you don't often see in mainstream books um, as much. We're getting a lot more of that now, which is exciting. Um, but her characters often have autism. And um, so like the kids quotient, uh, her first, um, is about a woman named Stella who has made a wonderful life for herself. Um, she is like math is what makes sense to her. And she has figured out a job where she can use math and predict how customers are going to purchase things, which obviously is a very coveted thing in the marketing world. Um, and so she, she does really well for herself. She's a gifted musician and all kinds of things. What she doesn't understand necessarily is social situations or like how to date and have relationships in the world in which we live. Um, and that's really, really hard for her. And so in order to kind of get out of her comfort zone and figure some of the things out, she decides to hire a man, um, hire an escort who obviously has a lot of dating experience and to teach her how to do this and to work her through this. So obviously then they end up um, being attracted to each other and the rest of the story entails. Um, but I love the author because um, I feel like you get this um, look through a lens of the world and it helps you maybe understand a little bit about um, people in everyday life and, and what they struggle with and 
how you can figure out how to um, navigate the world in a different way. Um, and so romance is more than just that relationship with uh, a partner, but it's more of experiencing life and trying to, we're all trying to figure out our, our life and our way through it. So um, Helen Hong, love her books. What do you got next for us? Well, I really liked one of the things you just said about romance fiction, knowing that you're gonna have that happily ever after at the end. I really feel like that's a hallmark of all genre fiction. You pick up a book, if it's a mystery, you know you're gonna have, you know, you're gonna find out who did it at the end, you're gonna find out why. There's some things that you can always expect, and I think that's what kind of brings genre readers back to the same genre time after time. I've got another mystery series for you here. It's the Massa and Platy Mysteries by Malka Older. It's definitely a real mystery this time. It's, uh, it's actually a really, it's kind of a Sherlock Holmes kind of play. You've read Sherlock Holmes, I'm sure, mystery readers, but maybe you came away with a little feeling of inadequacy. Maybe you thought to yourself, self, wouldn't it be better if Holmes and Watson just got over it and like really embraced their sexual chemistry and got together finally? And maybe it would be better if they were both women. And maybe it would be better if it was set sometime in the future after humanity had messed up Earth and fled to live in the upper atmosphere of the planet Jupiter. Uh, yeah, it's a sci-fi book. It, yeah, it's also a mystery, but you know, all right. You got me again, I guess. But uh, yeah, if you ever thought any of those things, and uh, why wouldn't you have, uh, this is the book for you. Masa is the investigatory savant. She is off-putting in person, but she's able to make leaps of logic that no one else can. Platy is a professor. She's really comfortable and kind of set in her ways at her university, but she ends up drawn into Masa's investigation uh, amongst the faculty of this university. The vibe is actually really close to Victorian, even though it's kind of futuristic. You know, they eat scones, they drink tea, they do it all against the backdrop of this kind of Cambridge-style university. There's even misty streets and train schedules to consult for clues. Mystery readers who like English historicals should like these, even if they are sci-fi. And so should sci-fi readers who enjoy exploring uh, what authors think human futures on other planets might look like. So that uh, starts with The Mimicking of Known Successes by Malka Older. I totally have to pick that up. That sounds amazing. Um, my second author that I'd like to highlight is Allie Hazelwood. Um, these are just the like super awesome, fun reads when I just need something great and light to pick up. The thing I love about Allie Hazelwood books though is her women are amazing, like highly educated, um, really like forefront of their um, departments and in their fields and stuff like that. Um, like one character is studying neuroscience at NASA, I mean, brain science. Um, in The Love Hypothesis, Olive is doing research at Stanford University on pancreatic cancer. Um, and so really highly intelligent women, um, oftentimes breaking some glass ceilings in areas that typically have been male dominated um, for a while. And um, it's fascinating to see her lens on how to break into some of those industries and stuff like that with these really strong female characters. Um, yeah, so this one is The Love Hypothesis. This one is Olive. Um, she has just started a research grant at Stanford. And basically her, she's getting over a really bad breakup and her roommate is saying, you really need to get out there. And so kind of to get um, her roommate off her back, um, she and her professor, um, you know, have a little chemistry, so they decide to fake date. So this is definitely a fake date trope. Um, and along the way, he thinks that it'll help his career a little bit. Some of his funding has gotten stalled. And so he thinks having a relationship will kind of help. And they end up in this like whole relationship where like some of her research gets um, taken. A another competing professor kind of comes in and takes some of her research and claims it is his own and stuff. And so they have to kind of battle their way and, and fight to get her credit for where credit is due and, you know, fall in love along the way. So I love it because um, you get this look into what maybe um, higher ed 
uh, academia, like the other side of that is, um, maybe how cutthroat it is a little bit in research and stuff like that. Um, but it's just a really good story and lots of really great relationships that you build along the way. Um, she also has broken out into the young adult uh, genre as well with her romance. Um, and so I love that it kind of, you can kind of dip down um, into teens the way. Um, it's about a character, uh, Mallory, who just graduated high school and is like this huge um, chess genius, just amazing at chess, but she doesn't want to play anymore. And she gets kind of roped and sucked back into the world of chess. Um, and chess is kind of one of those games right now that is just like booming in popularity. So a really, really fun one to be able to connect um, maybe some younger readers with too. I'm the youth librarian and I have to bring in some of those younger books too, so. Absolutely. We've covered a whole bunch of genres here. We certainly haven't covered them all. You'll have to come into the library to find the genre pick that works best for you. And you can also pick up, since this is September, the first month of our next year of 12 to try. Come in and uh, get your starting point. You can see all of the categories on the back. Read at your own pace, um, but definitely follow us along. We'll release a video each month with some recommendations as to what the monthly prompt is. Thanks for joining us. <laughs>